Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're just going to give it one or two more minutes uh, for a few more folks to trickle in. Okay, welcome everybody to the Better Buildings, Better Plants, Water Savings Network introduction webinar. Uh, we're really glad to see so many people on the line. So hopefully we'll be able to answer any questions you have about the Water Savings Network. And hopefully by the end of this, convince everybody of the importance of joining the network too. Uh, so uh, Jonah, you can go ahead and hit the next slide, please. My name is John O'Neill. I am a technology manager at the Advanced Manufacturing Office at DOE. Um, I'm going to be sort of the point person for the water savings network on the industrial side with better plants. Um, and I will also be joined today by my colleague Hannah Debelius, who is in the building technologies office of DOE. Um, and she'll be sort of the point of contact for the better building side. So if, if partners on the building side have questions, direct those to Hannah. Okay, so a quick agenda setting for the webinar today. The first thing we're going to do is introduce the Water Savings Network, um, tell you guys a little bit about what we expect of partners and what we hope to provide for partners as a part of this network. Um, then we're going to hear a little bit about uh, a little bit from some of the water goal achievers from the previous water savings initiative uh, that, that Better Buildings and Better Plants had, um, hear about their successes and their, their efforts moving forward. Uh, third on the agenda is we're going to hear from a couple of our uh, experts from the national labs to discuss some of the technical assistance resources that are available, uh, particularly for better plants partners in the water savings network. Uh, then we also have a guest speaker from EPA who's going to talk a little bit about uh, EPA's water sense program, uh, which will be a little bit more relevant to uh, building sector. Uh, partners. And then finally, we'll leave some time for Q&A at the end to make sure everybody has all their questions answered. On the topic of Q&A, I would like to invite everybody to open up slido.com, uh, either in a separate window or on a mobile device, and just enter the event code DOE. I will probably uh, drop that in the chat for your reference uh, so nobody forgets it. But please, instead of using the, uh, the native chat window in Zoom, uh, please funnel all your questions into the Slido uh, because we're going to also use that for uh, some polls later on in the webinar. Uh, so we just like to have everything in one place. Uh, Slido also has an option to sort of upvote and downvote questions that you think are relevant. So it just helps us prioritize um, what questions are, are most relevant and are, are, uh, are being asked by the most people. So you can go on to the next slide, please. Okay, so what is the Water Savings Network? This is a network of better buildings, better plants partners who participate in peer exchange activities and get recognized by the Department of Energy for their proven solutions and their, uh, their successes as they work to save water in their facilities. Partners can work with us at DOE to track a water reduction goal across their entire portfolio or a portion of their portfolio. Um, and this brings up the question of why we want to focus on water efficiency at the Department of Energy. Why is this such a, an important effort for us? Um, water efficiency has a number of benefits uh, for, for facility managers. Um, in addition to lowering operating costs, sort of direct costs of paying a water bill, um, water efficiency can increase reliability at your facility, can improve water quality, uh, and saving water also saves the energy required to transport, treat it, heat it, cool it, et cetera. Um, and so there's a really close tie-in between energy use and water use at your facilities. Um, and so it's really important for us, uh, it, it, for DOE's broader mission uh, of energy efficiency to tackle water efficiency as well. 
Um, and this is particularly concerning because in, in 2020, on average, uh, over a quarter of the US population experienced conditions ranging from abnormally dry to extreme drought. Uh, and this, ex this uh, statistic increased to almost 40% in the second half of the year, and it continues to intensify in 2021. Uh, so this is an increasing challenge, uh, and it's becoming more and more relevant to more and more folks, um, and, and more and more facilities are really going to have to think about how they use water in their facilities. Next slide. Um, so what are we asking organizations to commit to as part of the Water Savings Network? Uh, first off, uh, participants are strongly encouraged to set a specific water use intensity goal for all of their portfolio or potentially a portion of their portfolio, uh, which, for example, could be those facilities of theirs that are located in water stressed regions. Um, and we also expect partners to contribute in one or more of the following ways. Uh, partners can track and share their progress towards a water savings goal, so, so provide some uh, data on their progress. Uh, partners can also publish a case study on the Better Building Solutions Center to share a little bit about a challenge that they faced and a solution that they found to share that with other partners. Uh, we also invite partners to share their best practices and lessons learned uh, through other formats of peer exchange. So that could be calls or webinars, for example. Um, and then finally, uh, we encourage uh, partners to document the ways water efficiency impacts other priority areas for their organizations, such as energy reduction, resilience, equity, and workforce development. Okay, and now for this portion of the presentation, I'm going to hand it over to Hannah. Great, thanks so much, John. I have the wonderful pleasure of talking a little bit more about how far we've come with our existing partners in the work that you all have helped contribute to for um, water efforts and better buildings. For those of you that have been with us working on water for a couple of years, you know that our main focus has been goal setting and data tracking. And this is something that's still going to remain a priority for us, but we're really excited to be able to um, expand what we're doing and bring in more partners to really increase the value of our peer exchanges and dedicate more uh, more resources to this so that we can continue to build on progress here. So we are evolving this program, um, as John mentioned, and highlighted a couple of those key things um, in order to showcase additional leadership and really increase that engagement. Um, but we are building on a great foundation. So I would like to thank our 50 plus partners um, from all different sectors across the commercial and industrial side of things who have really contributed a lot over the years, including more than 40 water-related solutions, which you can find on our Solution Center, and have collectively saved 10.2 billion gallons of water. Um, and with that, I'm really glad to welcome some of those partners on the phone with us today who can share a little bit more about the you know, journey they've had with water, some of the success they've been able to highlight with better buildings or what comes next. Um, so with that, I'm gonna start um, with so Nicole, if you're able to hop on audio, we'd love to hear a little bit more from you all. Hi, sure. Can you hear me? Sure can. Go for it. Awesome. Well, we've started back on water, gosh, like in 2012 when we started working with um, the DOT when the Better Plants program came out. And um, <clears throat> our original goal was to reduce our water consumption from our 2010 baseline by 33%. And we started working on that. <clears throat> we started working on a combination of facilities and ops improvements, as well as community projects to restore water. And we were able to, um, and that was for a 2020 goal, by the way, and we were able to meet that goal early. <clears throat> so we changed our goal to, excuse me, <clears throat> from 33% to 50% reduction goal. Um, and we were working with um, several priority plants <clears throat> several priority plants and, and working on um, reuse opportunities as well as um, reduction opportunities, equipment efficiencies and those kinds of things. And we were able to reduce annually um, the first three years about 12%. And then after that, we were able to reduce um, around four or five percent because we, you know, we were getting into more um, difficult projects to implement. And um, 
In 2020, we were able to achieve a 53% reduction goal. And our reduction was based on water intensity, which is a measure of um, gallons per hour worked. And uh, we've recently set a new goal for 2030. Um, and we have trans transitioned from an intensity goal measure to an absolute reduction. So our new goal for 2030 is to reduce our absolute consumption from our 2018 baseline to, um, to reduce it by 30%. And um, while doing that, we were, when we first started in the, <clears throat> when we first started here, we were using um, about 1.1 billion gallons of water a year. So uh, we've been able to reduce that quite a bit with that 53% reduction target. And um, we're looking at an additional reduction with the 2030 goal of somewhere around 300 million um, gallons a year with that, with that program. Uh, in addition to our operations and efficiency measures, we also um, set a goal for neutrality within our community, and we were able to achieve water neutrality at 16 Cummins locations, all located in water stress regions, and all that use more than a million gallons of water a year. Um, we, we were actually able to offset our water consumption in our community um, in a volume that is larger than Cummins global water consumption annually. So we're very proud of that. And we're moving on to a, a larger impactful goal for that with our new waterworks program. So um, just a little bit about us. And uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thanks so much, Nicole. I really appreciate that. Not all, and congratulations on the incredible success you all have had. And then you know, the ambition that you're bringing to the table for your second goal, water neutrality. That's really excellent. Um, next, I'd like to invite Bob Baird of General Motors to come on, hop on. Bob, if you want to turn on your, your video and audio, we'd love to hear from you. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Baird with General Motors, and we have had an, a pretty extensive relationship with the Department of Energy and the EPA with Better Plants and Challenge for Industry and working on mainly energy programs, but we've also learned from that and tried to integrate or adapt the water programs as well. And so we, we integrated water management actually into each plant's business plans. And so they are given a targeted improvement. We track their performance as it relates to the consumption. And then we look at that on an intensity basis and also on, on a total basis. And, and as we've moved through that process, we are including water opportunities in our on-site efforts, whether this is funded through a, a corporate savings program, or through performance contracts, but we've also incorporated the, the water parts of, of what we're doing in our treasure hunts. And because of COVID, we've switched those to virtual and we look at water and energy at the same time because we find many of the same people are involved and things that save on water also typically save on energy and vice versa. So we're working along in those directions to get the water message to become more public, more, more presentable to the, to the plants and to the organization. And each plant is tasked with coming up with a, a sufficiency plan to identify what they're gonna do this year to meet the budgeted reductions that we anticipate or develop the, in the previous year. So we're using that tool to, to monitor what ideas are out there so we can share the ideas. 
but also make sure that the plants are making reasonable progress on their reductions. And out of that, we have water leak identification and repairs that we're encouraging the plants to talk about. We're looking at <clears throat> non-productive periods, how to make sure that the water is shut off and not left running. And, and that could include automation where we might put sensors in that would sense when a, a part is present. And if it isn't, that the water gets shut off. And, and we also have been cascading water from a high quality operation to a, a lower quality one so that we could reduce the amount of water just by having the internal recycle and, and reprocessing, so to speak, to try and minimize flows. We're looking at our cooling towers. <clears throat> have we optimized the cycles of concentration to make sure we're running the towers as efficiently as we can? And how do we improve the blowdown of solids and whatnot to, to get the towers to really and truly work correctly, maximizing the, the, the differential temperatures while minimizing water drift and carry out from the cooling towers. We also are trying to see how we might utilize water reuse in addition to the internal cascading in the machines. How could we use storm water that we collect on site and put it back into our, our processes, maybe in a cooling tower or some other operation? How might we use blowdown from a an RO water or water purification system, again, in an operation that maybe doesn't need as high a quality to, to try and truly move towards less being discharged, less water being needed. And we've been utilizing or trying to develop along with the Department of Energy's plant water profiler tool that looks at the true cost of, of water and realizing in most of the United States, the cost of water is pretty economical and it makes it pretty hard to cost justify doing things. But if you include the cost of the chemicals or any energy that might be trapped in it that is being discharged, like the heat and condensate from steam, we're trying to see how all those things will dovetail to to help us go forward is, is in minimizing the water. And, and one other one that we're doing that's outside of General Motors is we're also talking to our suppliers and trying to help them with treasure hunts that include energy and water as well. So we're expanding our water horizon, not just to our own facilities, but also looking then at the supply base. And again, if they're questions at the end, I'd be happy to see what we can do to address them. Yeah, thanks so much, Bob. I appreciate you highlighting some of those um, specifics for what's on the horizon for you all. And of course, also calling attention to the, the water energy nexus. Um, as Bob mentioned, you can also ask questions from our panelists. And the best way to do that is to um, either click the link in the chat for this or go to slido.com and put in the event code DOE. And I see a couple questions coming in already for that. Great. Um, now I'd like to invite uh, Harkin from um, one of our commercial real estate partners, Anthem, you wanted to mention a couple of words about um, your water initiatives. Great. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Um, thanks, Santa, and thanks, Better Buildings, for putting this together. It is extremely important right now. Um, I was just looking at uh, World Economic Forum risk factors for 2021, and where water is not included in 2021, it was one of the top five in 2020. Um, so this is an extremely important topic and uh, glad to be part of it. So Anthem, so we're health services, health benefits, so don't necessarily have the same water footprint as a Cummins or a GM, um, but we still operate large offices across the US and internationally, large data centers. Uh, we have over 85,000 employees, uh, serve over 44 million members uh, through our, our insurance offerings. And so there's there's there is opportunity, and you know I'd say our our journey really started in 2014. Um, prior to that, uh, candidly, we weren't doing a whole lot in the space of water. Um, 
2014, we started benchmarking our usage and, and starting to track our usage. Um, I believe, Hannah, it was in 2017 or 18 where we um, joined Better Buildings and uh, found a lot of value in that, uh, both being part of kind of a larger external initiative, as well as capitalizing on uh, resources and tools that are available. And just even the peer-to-peer -peer sharing um, has been of tremendous value. Uh, our, has helped with, um, it's focused on six different areas. Um, and so the first is the leadership commitment. Um, organization, which is really helpful. The US, so uh, the benchmarking has been a challenge, um, but something we've been, up, been able to, to put in place over the years. Uh, the third is set, setting a goal, um, which, you know, I, I see better buildings and um, this project, this partnership being a great uh, opportunity and medium for setting that goal. The fourth is identifying and prioritizing projects. And this one is interesting because when we got into this part of the strategy, um, we found that there was opportunity in California, um, which at the time was uh, facing record drought and still is facing drought today. Um, and so I think that that piece of the strategy is key, focusing in on your sites that may be facing water security type issues or droughts. Um, the next piece was dedicated budget. Uh, we found that within our facilities, capital planning, um, lots of money spent on aesthetics and uh, landscaping and other things, but not necessarily in, in energy efficiency as well, but not necessarily the water efficiency. Um, just because of the, the low cost of water, um, the undervalued uh, water, how undervalued water truly is. And so I think, I think that was a key component as well, um, actually allocating capital as part of a five-year plan towards water projects. And then the last piece is just measuring and reporting, um, and reporting internally as well as externally. And I think, you know, better buildings, once again, it's been of value to, to report not only our commitment, but our progress over the years uh, to our stakeholders via better buildings. And we, you know, we've capitalized on the, um, the white paper and the, the case studies and, and all of that as part, as part of our partner profile. Um, the last thing I'll say is, you know, the, the projects that we've done over the years, so we've had major projects in California, um, we've saved about 40 million gallons of water annually, um, which, you know, once again, not manufacturing, not industry is pretty substantial. And then it equates to about, you know, three, 300 or $400,000 a year. Um, just based on the program that we put in place. So definitely a big fan of, of Better Buildings. And, and once again, thank you all uh, so much for putting this together. Awesome. Thanks so much, Hawken. Those are, it was really interesting to hear those six strategic areas laid out like that. And um, we are hoping to only increase our peer engagement for this. So that's great. Um, the last goal achiever that we'll hear from today is Magda, Magda from the Tenderloin Neighborhood Development um, Corporation. So, uh, you, Magda, are able to turn on your audio and video. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, I believe uh, I am in. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. So Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation provides, it's a low income housing. Uh, we provide housing to the extremely low income citizen and resident of San Francisco. Uh, we achieved our first water saving goal in 2019 for 2018 data, um, and we started in 2013, that was 20% uh, savings. Uh, immediately after we achieved the savings, we set another goal, which is another 20% savings in the next 10 years. Um, we are trying to save water in like two tier, I would say. First is we running water savings project that are focused on water savings. And then we see indirect water savings from other projects. So of course we are changing the toilets, uh, we are exchanging uh, shower heads, uh, but also we are looking at uh, meteorite faucets. So several of our properties, we have uh, multiple common area bathrooms. So as this is common knowledge, we cannot use meterate showers, but uh, we are ex exploring the opportunity for uh, meterate faucets. 
and also we are looking at the occupancy sensor. So this is something new, we never did it before. We don't know uh, actually anybody who did it before, but this is our goal for the next five years to really look at the water savings opportunities and the new technology uh, in these fields. Um, especially that 100% of our properties are master meter for water. So um, we don't have much influence over tenant behaviors and COVID situation did not help us at all in, in this matter. Um, not only that 100% of our people were staying home, but also there is a lot of additional cleaning that is happening uh, constantly in our properties. Um, but even with this, we see some reduction in 2020 versus 2019. Portfolio-wide, uh, we reduce water by 3%. This is not the number we were hoping for, but at the same time, I was positively surprised that with pandemic hitting us, we still see some good results. And a um, couple of other projects that we are running and see good numbers for water is from the energy savings package act, actually. So we do a couple of heat pumps exchange or installment at a couple of our properties. And what is coming with this is often we are fixing crossover repairs. So this is giving us some savings here. And also we are installing the recirculation pumps. So it's helping with um, availability of hot water for the units. So people are not wasting cold water while waiting till they will receive the warm water. And another project that we have done is we have storm water capacity of one hour property, but rain amount in San Francisco is not giving us a lot of water supply from this source. So we are looking at this if um, repeating this project in other properties makes sense or not so much. Um, and with this, uh, we are moving forward next year and couple of next following years, that will be definitely water saving oriented project for TNDC. Uh, water is water is life and we are aware of it and we will be working on it and we are uh, very happy to be part of uh, water achievers and we hope to reach our new goal also thank you all so much excellent thank you so much magda it's really great to um hear about those initiatives and also you know from the multi-family space type um which is a little bit different than some of our other sectors so i appreciate that um, a big congratulations again to all of our goal achievers that we have for the water pilot. Um, yeah, we can move that side. Um, it's been such a pleasure uh, partnering with you all, and we are excited to continue to build on that, as I mentioned. So just a couple of key highlights about if you've been a partner with us, some things that are, are changing, which is that we will continue to be to have a um, priority around goal setting. However, you're going to have some additional options, which is that now partners can set a goal for just a portion of the portfolio. And we encourage that to be around potentially a water stressed region. We'll also have more opportunities for peer exchanges um, as we also increase the size of our network for this effort. And um, there will also be an option to instead be a solutions based partner with us. Um, if setting a water goal right now for a portion of your, or all of your portfolio is possible. Um, and finally, we will have a higher level of technical assistance through resource sharing and development, which we'll also be building in conjunction with you all. So with that, I know we're also eager to hear from our experts. So I will turn it back over to John um, to continue on here. Great, thanks, Hannah. Um, so I hope what people got from that last slide, uh, in part at least, is that we're really trying to make this uh, this this network as responsive as possible and we want to solicit as much feedback as possible from our partners to make sure that we're providing uh, resources and assistance that's most valuable to you. Um, so I would, in that spirit, I would encourage everybody to head over to the Slido uh, at the moment, 
we, in addition to the Q&A at the top, there's a, a polls tab. So if you go ahead and click over to that, um, we just wanna ask a few questions of our attendees today to see um, some of the challenges you guys are facing and uh, what, what type of resources you feel like you really need. So go ahead and fill that out um, and we'll monitor the responses as they come in. This is great. It looks like so far monitoring and tracking water data is a challenge for a lot of, of our attendees on the call today. Um, that's good news. I know that we already have several resources. And, and again, you'll hear in a few minutes from some of, of our experts. Um, we already have some resources that can help you uh, track and monitor your water data and really understand where it's being used in your facility. Um, and so that's, that's great to, to know. Um, some other challenges look like uh, optimizing systems and integrating new technology um, and financing, also things that, that we can help with um, and continue to tailor our, our, uh, our resources on those moving forward. Okay. So maybe we can head to the next poll question. I think we've got three total. Okay, next would be, what type of resource would be most valuable for your organization? Um, do you wanna see solutions from other partners? Do you wanna have more peer exchanges, more webinars like this one, um, more technical assistance? Uh, what is it that you guys are looking for uh, from us? Okay. I see that technical assistance is a high priority item. That's great. We have a really, really knowledgeable team of experts that can help with that. Um, and it looks like number two is solutions from other better buildings and better plants partners. Um, as Hannah mentioned, the peer to peer learning and peer to peer exchange is really something we're going to focus on in the water savings network um, that, that may be a, a stronger priority uh, than it was for the water savings initiative. So that's great to hear. Uh, I'm glad that, that, uh, that that's gonna be well received. Um, and then it looks like uh, some peer exchanges and webinars as well. And, and for those of you who, who wrote other, uh, maybe if you want to uh, drop something in the, the Slido Q&A uh, about that, if you have any, any particular challenges that you'd like to hear about. Or, or particular resources you'd like to uh, to have access to. Okay, great. Um, why don't we head to the final question then? All righty. What peer exchange topic would be of the most interest to your organization? Is it uh, linking water and energy efficiency efforts, prioritizing water efficiency in water stressed regions? monitoring and tracking usage data, uh, implementing water reuse systems, um, or strategies for installing water efficient equipment and technologies. Okay, looks like this one's a little bit more of a mixed bag, um, but it seems that pairing water and energy efficiency efforts is a pretty high priority for a lot of folks. Um, that's definitely something that we have resources to, to help you with. Um, and I know, I know for a fact that, that uh, a couple of our experts are gonna speak to that on the better plant side in particular later. Um, Strategies for installing efficient equipment and technologies. That's good to know. Um, and implementing water reuse systems. Um, 
Excellent. Thank you all for the feedback on that. Um, we really appreciate it. This information, um, you know, one, it's helpful to know that we're sort of on the right track already and the, the resources we have developed and are continuing to develop. Um, but it's also really helpful for us moving forward to shape this program to be as impactful as possible uh, as it can be for you guys. Uh, we want to make sure that you're getting as much out of this as you can. Uh, so thanks so much. That's really going to inform our efforts. All righty. Um, so the next portion of the webinar is uh, a little bit of uh, some expert feedback. Um, we're going to hear from Prakash Rao and Kiran Thirumaran, <clears throat> excuse me, Thirumaran, um, on the technical assistance resources that are available to Better Plants partners. Um, so this portion is going to be a, a little bit more geared towards our industrial partners. Uh, and then at the end, we will have a little bit more uh, directed at our Better Buildings partners. So bear with us if you're in that boat. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Prakash Rao. He is a research scientist within the Buildings and Industrial Applications Department at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab in Berkeley, California. Dr. Rao conducts research and analysis into the potential for reducing the energy consumption and water use impacts of the U.S. manufacturing sector while maintaining its productivity. Dr. Rao also conducts analysis of large-scale desalination, focusing on its energy implications and reduction opportunities. He received his doctorate in mechanical and aerospace engineering from Rutgers University and his bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, Kiran Thurmaran is a research staff at Oak Ridge National Laboratory with a focus on industrial energy and water efficiency, thermal process intensification, industrial decarbonization, and statistical analysis. <clears throat> His research works to develop the next generation of energy efficient technologies and strategies. Uh, Mr. Thirumaran is also a technical account manager for the Better Plants program, assisting partner companies achieve their energy, water, and carbon reduction targets by analyzing energy consumption, identifying gaps in energy management practices, and supporting the implementation of relevant strategies and impacts. He's also the engineering lead for the program's water efficiency efforts, and he conducts water efficiency workshops and trainings for industrial facilities. So I'm going to pass it over now to Prakash Rao. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, John. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, technical assistance resources along with Karen, as John mentioned. Um, if we go to the next slide, please. So a uh, really broad level overview, uh, what TA resources are available to partners of the Water Savings Network. So one of the things you'll get is expert uh, technical assistance. Uh, for example, uh, this, is, this could be, you know, ask an expert sessions uh, on water efficiency at the Better Building Summit. It could be your TAM, uh, someone like Karen or others who, who uh, uh, your technical account manager who are knowledgeable at water, assist, uh, water efficiency. Um, so it, you know, it's kind of like a phone a friend for, for your water uh, water efforts. You'll be able to um, tap into a, a, a network of National Lab and other experts on water efficiency to get you going in the right direction. In plant trainings, Karen's going to talk uh, in, in more depth about that. But these are great opportunities to understand uh, water. Uh, actually, have a water assessment conducted at your plant to understand your opportunities. Have others from uh, neighboring plants or, or, or your other facilities. Uh, join in so that they can then look at their own plans to see if those similar opportunities exist so to actually realize some real savings and real uh, opportunity identification. And again, software tools is something Kieran will be uh, getting into detail. Um, so uh, I'll save that for him. Um, fact sheets, presentations, best practices, and other guidance and liter written literature that you could just uh, review at your own uh, uh, pace and, and, and as needed to understand things like uh, some of the things from the poll questions. What are other partners doing? Uh, how can you save water and energy together? Where do you need to look out for when, if you're saving energy, maybe you're increasing water, the, 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 you know, some of the unintended consequences as well. So just better understanding your water uh, management um, and water conservation at your facilities and learning from others. What are others doing? Uh, and in that vein, case studies is, is something big that's, that's always offered to the Better Plants Network, uh, Water Savings Network. Uh, showcase uh, projects, implementation models, for example, are things I think partners are familiar with. And we have ones from Nissan and Harbeck on, on, on things like water reuse and um, uh, rainwater harvesting. So some really advanced topics that you can understand how 
other facilities implemented it and what benefits they realized. And as this is uh, uh, moving forward and, and, and into its next era, so the Water Saving Initiative seeks to expand upon these TA um, offerings. So there's always a constantly evolving resource library. So uh, more of everything you see above, I think, uh, coming from uh, this network as informed and as um, uh, as demanded, by, I guess, by, 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 the, by, by the partners. Um, increased opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer networking facilitated by DOE. This could be at summits um, uh, or, or other opportunities to start to hear from your colleagues about what they're doing. And it's one of those things I think is very important in water as water's management and water efficiency is, is quite a bit newer than energy management, energy efficiency conceptually. And so it's really great to hear what are others doing as we're all kind of endeavoring on this, um, some of us uh, newly endeavoring upon this. Now, the next two things are not exclusive to Better Plants partners, but there's, uh, or Better Buildings Water Savings partners there, but there is a, um, there's a benefit, I think, to, to, to being part of the program where you, where you can kind of leverage these next two items and, and maybe more uh, impactful manner at your facilities. So what, what is technical technology implementation support? So, uh, and specifically here, uh, as an example, the uh, Department of Energy has launched this industrial technologies validation program where you as the facility are partnering with the vendor of a, of a new, techno new or emerging technology that can save water or energy or waste. And maybe you're not too sure, maybe you're, you're implementing it at one process line, one facility. You wanna make sure that's gonna deliver uh, what you think it's gonna deliver, that the performance claims you know, uh, are what they are. And before you implement more broadly across your portfolio plans and processes, what the ITV program can help you do is uh, apply through the Department of Energy and the Department of Energy will pick up the bill on the measurement and verification conducted through an, uh, um, um, national lab experts. So you can get third party confidence that that technology is delivering the water savings um, uh, it, as promised before you roll it out more water, more broadly. Um, and here's an, a, a, here I think those in the water savings initiative, you're setting goals, you're tracking progress to goals, you're looking at your data, you're looking for opportunities. I, I, it, these sort of opportunities to, to what how, are, are, are these technologies really gonna pay off? Um, I think that kind of it, it gains more interest as you sort of uh, look at the water savings initiative and work through it. Um, the value of these programs might be more, um, and what might be increased. Uh, similarly, connections to early stage research. So recently Department of Energy, I guess it's not too recently now, but has kicked off its uh, National Alliance for Water Innovation, which is looking at, it is a large consortium of universities and national labs led by Lawrence, uh, headquartered at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, where uh, it's looking at early stage research and water treatment. Um, so uh, understanding what's new on the horizon, what are the challenges, what, what's really going, what's going on sort of in the next gen of water treatment, that's where now we can kind of help you. And I think being connected to the Water Savings Initiative, you might have an, you, you might, you'll be just, more uh, aware of, of some of the happenings uh, that's going on. And again, ITV program, the, the NAWI, the, they're, they're uh, accessible to all, but, but being in the Water Savings Initiative kind of gives you that inside scoop. And as a short little anecdote of how partners can kind of play a little ping pong and, and bounce off of these to, their, to everyone's benefit, really. Uh, we had one large steel mill using implant training, as, as, as Kieran's going to talk about, to identify uh, where their water loss is and where their, some of their water opportunities are. Um, use NAWI and, and, and to further investigate those and think about technologies that they might be able to um, implement and are now in the ITV program with one of those technologies to see if those, is it gonna work. So they're sort of bouncing around here and kind of leveraging all these opportunities to really save water at their plant. And then we're excited for them. Um, and I think it's a great story. And, and the last is uh, a lot of these improvements will be informed by you. Uh, I think that as we hear from you guys, what's the reality on the ground of what's really needed, we can then think, okay, what tools do we need? To, what tools can we develop to help you? What guidance documents can we, or webinars can we put on to help you guys um, achieve your goals? Uh, next slide, please. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things here that um, uh, uh, the TA resources, uh, in addition to the ones Karen will be highlighting in a bit. Uh, one is this uh, water management uh, uh, best practice guide. So this was developed uh, in, in conjunction uh, with the original uh, cohort of water savings initiative uh, partners uh, on the better plant side, we asked, um, I think it was seven at the time, all of them 
various questions about their water management practices. How do they uh, how do they finance water improvements? How do they select facilities to focus on? How do they baseline? What opportunities they're implementing? Wrap that all up into a guidance document into a guidebook, um, and and published it for for folks to kind of benefit from that. And we've heard a lot of people have been able to use this, not necessarily to see their water management go through <laughs> completely, but at least get it started. Uh, you know, kind of get step one in, and then from step one, two, three, and four become that much easier, and the ball gets rolling. Um, and that was entirely informed by uh, uh, partners and and just something where we could share. Um, and the other opportunity I want to uh, highlight uh, before we go to Kieran is uh, uh, webinars and opportunities to hear from each other. So we've, uh, uh, Department of Energy through the Water Savings Network and Better Plants has hosted a, a whole slew of um, webinars uh, with industrial speakers. I mean, you heard today from a few, uh, but also uh, in the past, Cummins has talked about uh, projects and technologies that save water. They've talked about using the energy management system for water efficiency. Dow Chemical has talked about the new wave of energy water nexus. Uh, GM, who you heard from earlier, had, had presented on you know, water and wastewater treatment energy efficiency. Ford's looked at, uh, presented on how they leveraged a water pilot. Harbeck has, has, has talked about uh, water reuse and um, not water reuse, excuse me, um, rainwater collection. Uh, Nissan's talked about water reuse. reuse. Um, and just recently at the, at the past summit, we held uh, the GM and Cleveland Cliffs and others and, and municipal water wastewater utilities all got together in one session to talk about that connection between the municipal wastewater and industrial wastewater treatment, what's new on the technology horizon. And we really had a great session to kind of connect those two sectors together where there, you know, there's technological similarity. So those are just some of the opportunities. I'm, I'll, I'll hang on here after the webinar and happy to answer any questions. Uh, but before that, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it over to Kieran. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Prakash. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. So Prakash gave a really good overview of the different kind of like technical opportunity, technical assistance opportunities that we have as part of the program, uh, especially tailored for industrial partners, right? And I wanted to highlight uh, three of those in a little bit more detail. And uh, a lot of you indicated that uh, data collection and monitoring being a big interest uh, to you guys in the, uh, in the water space. And all three opportunities that I'm going to be talking about has a lot of synergy to that, right? So it's really encouraging to me um, to, to kind of like talk about this and kind of like fine tune this kind of like going forward. So the first opportunity I'm going to be talking about is the water implant trainings. So for anyone who's um, uh, who's familiar with the Better Plants program, you know, in-plant trainings are our flagship uh, technical assistance opportunity, right? And uh, the water in-plant training uh, focuses on industrial water efficiency and is fine-tuned for that. Um, so the water in-plant training um, is a two, two and a half to three day event that we come and do it at your site um, along with uh, the, the DOE expert and the, and the water training in specific is uh, trying to do like three things right, that we try to achieve as part of the training. One is uh, to establish a water baseline for your facility. So we are at your site, we try to like collect data and uh, try to establish a water baseline on how much water your, uh, your type of facility is taking in, how much of it is being used in your different systems, how much is being recycled and all that. Um, and a complete water flow is what we try to build for your facility. So that is the one, one, one of the goals for the training, establishing a water baseline. The second goal is to identify the true cost of water. So once we know how much water uh, your different systems are using, we try to find the true cost of water, right? So the true cost, uh, meaning um, uh, specifically uh, uh, what, what you're holistically paying for water use in your different system. So that includes the direct cost you're paying to your municipality and also the other hidden cost aspects of it, right? So maybe you're treating the water before it's being used in the system. So the cost associated with treating that water, the chemicals that you're adding in adds up to the cost of water. So we try to kind of find the holistic cost as a part of the implant training as well. And the third thing that we try to, um, um, we try to determine is again, water savings opportunities, right? So we've found how much water is being used, we found out how much is the, how much you're paying for it. And then we try to find, identify water saving opportunities and also quantify those opportunities, right? Through a treasure and process. Um, so those are kind of like three 
um, goals that we try to achieve as part of the implant training. And, um, and uh, of course, we, we make use of a lot of software and hardware tools to establish, uh, to kind of like, um, uh, to achieve that, right? And those are the, uh, and uh, I'm gonna be talking about that software and hardware tools as part of my uh, next couple of slides. One thing I do want to highlight here with respect to the implant training is, of course, with the, all the COVID situation, we haven't been able to come, come to the facility and do it, um, even though we would love to do it in person. So in the last year, we have actually like uh, done the same, we, we, we took the same resources that, that we have developed for the, uh, for the in-person events, and we have done it virtually as part of like eight different sessions spread across um, eight weeks, right? And uh, so we did, we did that uh, earlier during this year. It was a great success. We had a really good turnout and a lot of facilities participated. And all those uh, sessions are available uh, at the link provided for you, to, um, for you to take a look at and see um, uh, what are the things that we cover and make use, of, make use of the opportunity, right? So that's with respect to the implant training. Uh, one, of those, one of the tools that we, uh, that we rely upon heavily through the for the implant training is the plant water profiler tool. So this is an Excel based tool. It's available on the website for you to make use of. And uh, specifically, what it uh, essentially does, it uh, gives you a systematic way to kind of like walk through the steps that we spoke about, right? Water baselining, finding the true cost, and identifying the opportunities. So the PWP tool um, streamlines that process and gives you a systematic way to approach these three steps. So next, uh, and um, and uh, and essentially the um, um, essentially the slide talks about the three steps that I uh, that I already mentioned and about the PWP tool, right? And um, and another big portion of the tool is it walks you through the three steps and gives you uh, gives you the comprehensive results from that, right? In the form of like pie charts, different bar charts, and and the table. One specific thing, again, I wanted to mention with respect to the PWP tool is the benchmarking aspect of it. And um, so I highly, highly encourage you to take a, take a look at the tool when you get the chance and, uh, and let us know if you, are, uh, if you have like any questions on that. The next slide, please. Um, another, uh, another big portion of or one big, another technical assistance uh, opportunity that we have is the hardware tools, right? And the diagnostic equipment loan program through which you can loan out equipments um, that, that we have and make use of it for our purposes, right? And we have a couple of tools that are specifically, um, specifically available for the data collection and monitoring in water systems. So one, just one example that I wanna talk about is the ultrasonic flow meters uh, that we have available that we make use of extensively during the implant trainings. But of course you can borrow it even outside of these uh, implant trainings for you to make use of it for your purposes, but it gives you a non-intrusive way to, uh, I, to measure the flow uh, through, through, your, through, through any of your water, water using processes, right? So this is another great uh, 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 opportunity that is available, uh, the equipment loan program that you can make, make use of as part of the water savings network. Um, so th that brings down, that brings me to the end of the slide. And uh, I just wanted to, before I pass it on, I just wanted to kind of like uh, echo what uh, Prakash said uh, specifically. Th so these are kind of, um, um, these are opportunities that we have that we have built into the program, but we also have like all other ad hoc assistance that we available through the technical account managers that you could always reach out to uh, if you have like specific water needs. Yeah, with that, I would like to pass it on to John. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks, Kieran, and thanks, Prakash, for all that information. Um, I'm going to pivot pretty quickly in the interest of time to our guest speaker, Tara O'Hare. Tara currently serves as the Implementation and Commercial Outreach Lead for EPA's WaterSense program. Tara has worked on WaterSense for the past nine years and is responsible for program operations, partner support, and outreach to commercial and institution facilities. She has delivered support, trainings, and webinars to a wide variety of stakeholders across the, the commercial building sector. Tara has a bachelor's in business and environmental management from the George Washington University and a master's in environmental science and policy from the Johns Hopkins University. Thanks so much for joining us, Tara. Thank you so much. You can go to the next slide. 
So I wanted to introduce you all to the WaterSense program. We are a little bit newer than Energy Star, but we are the sister program of Energy Star that was created as a voluntary program back in 2006. And we work to provide simple ways for consumers and businesses to identify water efficient products, practices, programs, and homes. The WaterSense label is the one that you see on the right hand side of your screen. And that is on in products that have been independently certified for water efficiency and performance. Back in the early 90s, when low flow products came out, they didn't always work as well. So each one of our specifications has a performance metric. That means that it saves water and actually works. So WaterSense is found on more than 38,000 product models in a bunch of different categories, including all of your restroom fixtures, as well as irrigation products, such as irrigation controllers and spray sprinkler bodies, as well as labeled homes. Next slide. We have a whole bunch of resources that have been created over the years. And so I just wanted to give you guys the link to all of those. Next slide. We have a bunch of checklists that are available that are easy to print out and use. So we have one that's for a simple water assessment and then a new one that we just created for the operation and maintenance process at your facility. So you can just print it out. It's good for a commercial and, or it could be used for industrial facility. And you can just print it out and go around and find some places to start saving. We also have been working with Energy Star to put water metrics into the treasure hunt guide. So you guys can get the access to those soon as well. Next slide. This is just an example of our water savings checklist. It all goes back to where you can find water savings in your facility. Next slide. So our big guidebook is our, all of the best practices for water saving products and technologies in a commercial building. It doesn't include industrial processes because they are a lot more complicated, but every single kind of water using um, tech, technology in a commercial building is in here. It includes both the operation and maintenance portion of the technology, as well as things to look for when you're going to replace it or retrofit it. Next slide. We also, I will be remiss if I don't point this out, um, because many buildings are, have been closed or at reduced occupancy, they do need to be flushed before they're opened again for water safety purposes. So I put a whole bunch of resources in here. The CDC has an excellent toolkit. If you're wondering about how water quality and water efficiency come together, you can take a look at this as well. Next slide. So we also do Water Wednesday webinars with Energy Star, and we have several of them that we've done so far this year, but we've also got three of them coming up in the next couple of months. So I encourage you guys, if you're interested in learning more about water savings, to sign up and take a look. Next slide. And that's it. You can reach me if you have any more questions. Thanks so much, Tara. And I'd also just like to add that um, these slides will be made available on the Better Building Solutions Center along with the recording, um, probably um, a few days after this presentation has concluded. So all the links that are in the slides will be made available online. Great, thanks so much. Um, why don't we, let's see, uh, we're short on time. So why don't we take one question here um, and, uh, and then we can uh, provide some contact information uh, for some follow-ups later on. Um, so I'm on the Slido right now. Uh, it looks like one question that has gotten a couple of upvotes is for Hakan, if he's still on the line, um, how are you prioritizing water health and safety as well as savings with offices uh, at lower capacity right now? Yeah, can you guys still hear me? Yep. Perfect. Um, yeah, one of the big things we're doing is I, IEQ testing. Um, so we're testing air, acoustics, lighting, and both um, domestic and process water at our offices with the concern of, of uh, stagnant lines and um, Le Legionella disease. So I think, I think the testing is, is key um, as you're making these these modifications, I think somebody put in the chat that, you know, they were concerned with the low flow fixtures and, um, you know, other potential negative implications of that. 
Um, and I'm not an engineer and I don't want to give any type of engineering advice, but I, I think the testing has been a best practice for us across our portfolio. Yes, and then if I could just chime in for a second. Um, the, we encourage everybody to have a, both a water quality and a water quantity program in, that they're managing to make sure that there are no issues with water uh, quality in the building. But there are um, a lot of things that you can do to make sure that everything is, is going well. So don't let that discourage you from low, low flow fixtures, please, because that's not usually an issue. OK, great. Thanks so much for the feedback on that question, guys. Um, I think we're going to have to cut the Q&A a little bit short, uh, but we do have all of these on record, so we'll try to follow up as much as we can. Um, and maybe we can go back to the PowerPoint really quick. Um, okay, so just wanted to make a quick plug for uh, another upcoming water webinar uh, called Glass Half Full, How Water Reduction Supports Resiliency, Cost Savings, and Occupant Health. That's going to be January 11th uh, from 11 to noon Eastern time. Um, we'll make sure, again, uh, that these slides are shared so that you have all these links. Um, but we'd encourage you to, to attend that webinar as well. Um, and of course, check out the rest of our, our Better Buildings webinar series on the Better Building Solution Center. OK, finally, we'll just wrap up. Um, if you are interested in joining, uh, please reach out to your program contact. So that's going to be either me or Hannah uh, or email betterbuildings at ee.doe.gov. Uh, another couple of resources links there. Uh, and then I think our final slide here uh, will have everybody's, yeah, all of our, our main uh, moderators' uh, emails and contact information if you're interested uh, in getting in touch with us. So I wanted to say thanks so much to everybody for attending. Uh, we're glad to see so much interest in the Water Savings Network and are looking forward to working with you moving forward. Thank you.